gonna mug me. I'm not gonna mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the Peace and Marathon. Download Veely now. It wasn't until we were our 20 week scan that we found out we were having twins. It was just these two round globes. The sonographer said his arms look a bit short. They looked at Maddie as well and told us she was fine. Everything changed a lot from that point. We're a family of seven. We have Hunter, who's 10, Reese, who's nine, and the twins. Madeline and Felix are going to be six in May. Two when we've got up. And then we have two year old Joss, who's only just turned two. Morning. Quite rushed, we've got a bit to fit in. Got to make Maddie's lunch. Okay, make your breakfast and then stay out of the kitchen for a bit, please. No, no, I'm fine with you doing it. Oh, hey, hey no. No hitting. Maddie, no hitting. No hitting. No hitting. Madeline has septo-optic dysplasia, which is a defect in development of her brain. There you go, now you're going to swim. So her pituitary didn't develop and her optic nerves are underdeveloped. Here we go. Going down, 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 down. She also has a brain injury, which has significantly impaired her development. She's non-verbal. She's a wheelchair user. She has quite fragile health. Yeah. It's right. Two, three, up towards mum. Up, up. Good girl. Good, good girl. Don't hit me. Good girl. Hey, you're okay. Take a jump or two. Felix was born with what's called phocomelia, which is interrupted development of the long bones in his arms. I checked her when I got up. He has two fingers on his left side at shoulder level and three fingers on his right side. Good morning. Felix has quite a severe spinal scoliosis that's progressing quite rapidly as he grows. That's going to require a surgical intervention to slow the progression and stabilise the curve until he can have a spinal fusion surgery to correct it. It's here. He has a few developmental delays. He is non-verbal autistic. Yeah. Our day would typically start somewhere between five o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock in the morning. We have our disability support worker come in and she'll help us with the morning routine, which is getting ready for school stuff, except that we have to do a bit more of it than we would with our other children. Cool. Happy. I have to give them their medications, I make their lunches, I make sure that I write down how their night's gone in the communication book. Are you happy, happy, yeah? Pretty good night's sleep last night, eh, hey, Maddie? That's why you're in a good mood this morning, yeah? Taxi's here. Come on, Felix, we're gonna go hop in the taxi, mate. See, Reese, do you wanna help me take these bags out, please, honey? Uh -huh. It's really normal now, the extra stuff like assisting them with eating and bathing them and continents, pants changes and dealing with messed clothing and dealing with messed beds. Good work, thank you, Reese. That's such a big help. We'll see you later, Maddie. You have a good day. We 
when it came time to look at schooling options, we went along to Greeton Village School and was really surprised by how well they were managing kids with complex medical needs. Good balancing. Good boy. They had set up safety procedures like having call bells throughout the school so that if a child had a seizure or something, they would be able to ring and get help really quickly. They were quite quick to say, look, you know, we are willing to take on a challenge and we are willing to do everything we can to accommodate her. I just felt so happy and relieved and it just felt right. Like this ultimately, it just, my instinct said, this is a place where she'll be happy. Maddie is learning to use a yes and no switch. So it's got yes on one side, no on the other. Maddie, you're gonna use your switch. Here, there you go. Do you want the tambourine? No. Do you want the fan? No. Oh, does Maddie want something else? You want something else? Yeah. Okay, we'll have something else. She's doing really well. She's come out of her shell. She's bright and bubbly and happy. She loves the other kids. And they're quite happy to sit and hold her hand. She is staying awake for longer during the day. In fact, now she's actually staying awake most days all day, which is really cool. Felix's teacher aide. He adores her and she's been really good with him and really intuitive and respectful and she just kind of gets who he is and how he ticks. Good boy. Good boy. Ready? Oh, Since he started, he's just blossomed. He's really happy there. He's really popular with the other kids. He comes home in a great mood. And it's a stark contrast to the little boy who seemed to be very suddenly cast inwards and disengaged and unhappy. He's now trying to join in with playing with toys with them, or at least playing alongside. <laughs> It's okay. Often I'll have appointments with various doctors, therapists, dietitians. Um, sometimes there'll be meetings with case managers and assessments and meetings at school. The script should be through by tomorrow. Often lots of paperwork and lots of phone calls. <laughs> My phone Thanks goes so much. pretty much constantly. Go. A smooth operator. I try and squeeze in a bit of time to do, you know, housework. Come on, let's go do Hunter's Bed, eh? Grocery shopping and, you know, all the typical mum stuff that needs to happen. Yeah. Come on, then. Yeah. You're a very good helper. You need to come in? Bo, 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 bo. Come on, you come and help. Hey, here, look, you can take all the pillows? Yep. Come here. No, no, I need you to move so I can put the pillow on. <laughs> James is the kind of person who just wanted to be a dad. I think it is natural to him. He is a really fun, cuddly, silly, nurturing kind of parent. With the older two boys, he was the one who had to take over kind of parenting them while I was in hospital. The way that we talk about motherhood and about parenting and about parenting children with additional needs is there's a lot of talking about, you know, how they're treasures and how they're special and how 
lots of other people would say things like, um, you know, God never gives us more than we can handle or special children choose special parents or you must be amazing. I couldn't deal with that. And I would feel like this big fraud because inside I didn't, I, I didn't want to be there half the time. So the only person I could, I felt like I could talk to about it or, or express it to was James. And so he got landed with all of that emotional load. She did her best. Yeah, she really did her best. But those sort of effects it would have on her mother is the, the guilt alone, because she blamed herself for the twins for such the longest time. I was deep in denial. So I think it took him stepping up and saying, like, we can't be this family. I can't care for these kids and care for you for me to have that breakdown and go, actually, I need help. It was a big turning point for me because I I was kind of pushed to, to, to build a social circle outside James. Everybody. How's it going? The next door neighbours spring. Parent to Parent is an organisation that supports families with children with disabilities. And I was invited along to join this art class. It's made up of mothers who've all got children with some kind of disability. We've um, finally found a respite carer. Oh, good. And that's going amazingly because that has been like my biggest thing for the last forever. Looking at the housing market because I'm kind of, I don't want to be renting and waiting for these um, people to decide, you know, oh, the house is sold and you need to move out. So started looking around, but accessible housing just does not exist. And what you can temporarily modify is really quite limited. So yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to be glad that we know we'll be able to take care of Madeline and Felix for life. I needed to start building support networks and trusting people and not feeling ashamed and not feeling like I had to keep that part of myself secret. Kind of accepting myself a bit more, like when I actually started feeling like I was safe to express those feelings of, of like, you know, some days I hate this and some days I don't feel like I'm adequate. I started hearing other mums say it too and I didn't feel like I was alone and it was really validating. I remember I came in here, were you here? And I was, I was just a blubbing mess and Karen had to help me pull myself together. Oh, yes. And she was, she was not gentle about it, but God, I needed that. You can't parent from an empty cup. If you try to, you just burn yourself out and dig yourself into a hole. Hi, Maddie. How was your day? How was your day, honey? Should we take your rain jacket off? There. Should we take your shoes off? Hey, should we take your shoe off? You want your shoe off, Maddie? There you go. You take off your other shoe? Okay, have fun, boys. How was your day? Hi. Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Mm -hmm. Are you going to kiss back or no? Hey. Oh. Oh, hi. Ah. You've got hair all over your face. Stay still, stay still. There you go. I know. I know. <laughs> You're okay. You're okay. Just please stop pulling out the wipes. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, you're fine. Can I hold your hand? Is that okay with you? 
You're all grubby. What have you been up to? Rub your feet. What are you doing? So I'm just going to pop Maddie to bed for a bit because she just needs some chill out time before she's ready to hang out. She's a bit, bit tired, eh? How about you? Are you okay? You're okay? Hi. You going to be good for a minute? Yeah. Okay. Well, you keep playing. Good boy. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Maddie's turn. Madeline, hello. Oh. Do you want to go have a rest yeah. now? Bye. Yeah, you say bye. Oh, you want to kiss? Do you want to kiss? Mwah. Good girl. Mwah. Come on then. You say bye bye, everybody. Come on, miss. All right, where is Felix? Are you tired, eh? Thank you for playing with me. Thank you. Hey? Hey, Felix, you want some kai? Yeah? Come on then, up to the table. Oh, honey, go sit down in your room and I'll come and have a chat to you, okay? Mm. I'll be with you in a minute. Hey? All right, you. Can you use your hand? Can you get them? No. Silly mummy. There you go. He's trying to talk. Everybody says he's like so close. He's got so much inside him he wants to say. He just can't find the words yet. We have noticed that he will follow instructions and that often he will do things after we've been talking without really talking to him um, that make us think actually he's, he's much more aware than what People assume, so. In a minute. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, hi, Maddie, I'm going to give you a kiss now. So this medication she has three times a day. It's a, um, a hormone replacement for one that would normally be produced in the pituitary gland that controls um, kidney function. So without it, her body retains all of the sodium and voids all of the free water and she becomes severely dehydrated. And then she will have just a hydrocortisone tablet. Hey, Maddie. It's time for your medicine, miss. Come on. Come on, honey. All right. Come on. Up. Just pop that one down. Here we go. Open up. And it goes. <gasps> Come on, then. Hi. Breathe. Hunter and Reese were two and four when the twins were born and mum just kind of disappeared and then our lives became really, really busy. I think because they were so young, it became normal to them really quickly and they actually adjusted really well. It's doing it again. They've both got a really deep sense of empathy and justice and a caring and just generally I think what they've gained from living in this family outweighs the stuff that is difficult.
Okay. So what do you need? Just someone to talk to. Okay. How'd your afternoon at school go? Oh, it was nice. It was nice? Everybody liked my haircut. Well, you keep up being super awesome and I will keep up spending time one-on-one -on -one with you. Even if it's just us going out for a coffee or... And a hot chocolate and a muffin. Hey, what you got there? You've stolen someone's car keys. Car. Yeah, in the car. You go unlock the car. Hey, babe. Hey, how's the day? Shit. Shit? Shit. <laughs> what are you doing? Looking at rest? I'm quite a different person than I was. Yes and no. Ugh. Three years ago, <laughs> four years ago now. It's just probably more like four years ago. So it's been a while. From my way of coping with things, I didn't know how to talk about what had happened with the twins. I felt like I was this really horrible, awful failure of a mum because I didn't feel loving and I didn't have a bond, especially with Madeline. I felt like I hadn't bonded with her. I was really anxious all the time. I was terrified there would be another diagnosis and that I would have to go through those feelings of, of having lost my child again. I poke your nose. I poke your nose. James bonded with them in a way that I think I really struggled to. He just kind of accepted it and got on with it. What are you doing, shorty? We learnt to find time wherever we could get it. And it's been really good to kind of be like, oh, that's right, like, I really like this person and I really enjoy spending time with him and actually I need to put in the hard work and take care of this person because, you know, we're going to be in this in, uh, together for the long haul. Um, and there's going to be the ups and downs with the twins and it's going to be, you know, it's a lifelong commitment raising these kids. So we have to take time together to take care of each other and take care of our relationship. We're learning how to have a relationship now. It's taken that long for us to get to this stage is that we're actually trying to work it out now. Um, basically f five years sort of just went look, and it's gone. So we are only just now learning how to have a relationship before it was more of a We just did it, <laughs> just to, we had to do it, so we just did it and just worked as a team, but now we can actually start enjoying each other. And... <laughs> Kira arrives at around five and she'll assist with feeding the twins. Okay, baby. Having heaps of people in and out of our home on a daily basis, it takes quite a while to adjust to. You can just... Every single day, two, three, four people okay. in your life it becomes really exposing and you, become, you do end up feeling really vulnerable. Good boy. There you go. Good girl, Maddie. It's good to see you awake, honey. How was school? How was school? I guess over time you kind of start to redefine what you see as being like a dignified, independent life. You start to realise that the values that maybe um, drive us all to be really individual aren't actually what's best for everybody. Guys, go sit up at the table, please. Yeah. Hey, Joss. Yeah. Are you a dick? <laughs> no. Yes. Hi. Hey, that's mine. Cool down soon. Don't like it when she's like this. Yes. So that counts as veggies, I think. Mm -hmm. Sure, pop, please. That's a really good dinner. Thank you, Mark. But in Minecraft, um, we use like moonstone torches and leaves. <laughs> 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 What's the matter, Maddie Moo? Oh, yeah. Okay, so. Hi. 
I'll move the turtle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're fine. Motherhood's a really complicated experience, I think, for any mother. It's demanding and it's exhausting. You know, some days you don't really feel like listening to what your kids have to say about stuff and you don't feel like being touchy and cuddly and you don't feel like being patient and you don't feel like being a mum, but you still are. And I think that's the time when it's most important to communicate with your partner and get them to pick it up. But may we always be good friends. My mother is waiting for me underneath the kofi tree. Sunny fire. Oh, you don't want it to end. What about you, Josie? Are you ready to get your pyjamas on? I didn't finish. I have really loved seeing what beautiful, caring, socially aware people I'm growing. Like, I feel like I'm making an impact on the world by teaching my children to be better people. And I think that creates a lot of hope for the future. Five to come around. Yeah, true. Everybody's everywhere, so <laughs> it's a bit hard to get around and do what, what we need to do when there's people everywhere. Sometimes it gets stressful because You've been told to do some something and then you get told to do another thing and then you get asked to do another thing. Mountainous jungle, thick with plumber. Gorillas love to sit and quiver. Our two-year-old Joss is, you know, a really full-on gorgeous toddler at the moment, so there's the usual kind of chaos involved with that, making sure he's not climbing the cupboards or pulling food out of the fridge and tipping it out. I'm loving having a toddler. Mucking around and being silly with him and singing and dancing and roughhousing. I love that stuff. A yellow robin might soon flitter by. Good night. Can you go to sleep now? Good night, honey. Usually Madeline wakes up between 10 and midnight and stays awake for a while, so I usually go to bed at about midnight. <laughs> Kiss for Dad. Can you back me up, babe? Yeah, you can take the blankie, but it's time for bed. Go give Hunter and Reese a kiss good night. Bang! All right, yeah, is it my turn? Is it my turn for a kiss? If I could go back and talk to myself before this journey began, I would tell myself it's okay not to be able to meet every single demand. Like, it's, it's, it's okay to just be enough. It's okay to feel like you're failing. It's okay to feel like this is a really crap deal. It's okay to say, like, I can't do this. And then it's okay to say that to other people and to get help. Seeing the triumphs and, and the progress and the little wins we have along the way, it makes me feel like all the hard work and all the kind of fighting and pushing are worth it. Who's up?